So is Canada heading in the right direction? I'm joined now by a panel of medical experts closely tracking the spread of COVID-19. Carolyn Colleen is a, an epidemiological modeler at Simon Fraser University. And Dr. Alan Vaisman is an infectious disease physician with the University Health Network in Toronto. Thank you both for being with me here on Canada Tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we just heard about, uh, you know, Ontario releasing that new data showing that the variants pose double the risk of someone being admitted to intensive care. Um, so far during this pandemic, most hospitals have avoided having to turn people away. Dr. Vaisman, are you concerned that that is going to change? Do you worry that we'll start to see a shortage of ICU beds with this information? Yeah, the capacity in some places in Canada, especially in Toronto, is coming to its uh, near completion. So there are have been cases already where we've had to transfer patients out from centres in Toronto or just east of Toronto out to other centres. So it's getting very near there. The, the concern this time is that the rise in the cases is so rapid compared to the first and second waves that it's hard to anticipate how much we're going to need in terms of ICU beds. But it is getting quite scary on that front. Uh, Dr. Colleen, you're in BC where uh, restrictions have loosened for visitors to long-term care homes. Uh, they've made temporary allowances for indoor religious services, as we heard. Uh, meanwhile, Ontario relaxing rules uh, around indoor shopping and dining and other forms of gathering. Are you worried about what this loosening of restrictions will mean for infection rates, especially with those variants uh, becoming so rampant? Yeah, so I'm definitely worried about the variants, in particular B117, for which we have really strong data that it has a higher transmission rate. And that's actually just as bad or even worse than the higher severity rates that, that you described earlier. Because if you have, say, five or ten times as many cases, even if they had a lower severity rate, it would be uh, much worse. And with a higher severity, uh, it's a problem. So I think the higher transmission is a huge concern. The fact that it does seem to be doubling with a consistent doubling time uh, here, it looks like about eight days. Uh, that, as, as you just heard, doesn't really give us long. What we don't want to do is wait until our capacity is used up or nearly used up because we're only one doubling time away from doubling those numbers and and so i do think it's a real cause for concern for sure and dr colleen do you uh do you worry that you know these uh you know canada is set to to hit a million next uh, next week a million covid cases uh, what do you think that governments should be doing uh to slow down these infection rates because there is kind of this debate about reopening and restrictions and people getting antsy Right. And I mean, people are sick of it. I do think outdoor gatherings are still one of the best ways that we can socialize. And so I'm less worried about allowing outdoor activities than I would be about reopening more and more indoor activities. The strength, if we're going to use widespread distancing in the whole population, the, the severity that we would have to use to control B117 with that as the cornerstone measure is just really, really high. So I'm hoping that we can complement our distancing with really proactive vaccination. We're doing that a little bit in BC around high contact workers and essential workers, people who can't avoid having high contact. And I'm hoping that we'll also be looking at rapid tests uh, to support that too, to really reduce transmission with all the tools in our toolkit rather than relying on what would have to be extremely severe restrictions. Dr. Vaisman, I posed this question to one of our other medical contributors earlier this week. We've got lockdowns and restrictions as one method, but do you worry about the message being lost on people gathering at homes? When there isn't much else that you can do, one of the things that isn't being policed is going to visit your family or going to hang out with your friends. Do you think that that message isn't being sent enough? Yeah, I think that's very important. As, a, as the temperature is warming up, it's important that we encourage people to do safe behaviors because people are always going to look for those outlets. So uh, letting people go out and have some activity out, in outside locations where the transmission risk is low is very important. Otherwise, those kinds of activities are going to happen inside homes, are going to happen inside where people are going to be congregating and not wearing masks and likely transmitting. And with the loosening of restrictions, even if there are some lower risk behaviors that are being allowed now, the problem is that it sends a message that the pandemic is somehow slowing down or that this isn't a big problem. And that's part of the problem is that we need to continue to make sure that everyone understands that we're still in a public health crisis. And by loosening things, you kind of send the opposite message. And, and doctor, let's talk about uh, vaccines. Uh, Dr. Vaisman, are you worried uh, about uh, 
the variants becoming vaccine resistant and, and us essentially not getting folks vaccinated fast enough before those vac- before those variants change and become resistant to it. Yes, it's, it's important to recognize that the most common, by far the most common variant that is present in Canada, the B117 variant, which originated in the UK, is uh, we are able to protect ourselves against it using the vaccines that are approved here in Canada. The concern is that if the transmission allows to, con- if we allow the transmission to occur and to continue, that there may be variants where the vaccines are less effective. It's unlikely that our vaccines are going to be completely ineffective, but perhaps partially effective against those variants. So it's really a race against time to get as many people vaccinated as we can, as fast as we can. And the message to Canadians should be that even if the presence of variants, even though we have the presence of variants here now, vaccines are effective and we need to get that done as soon as possible. Dr. Colleen, uh, Dr. Vaisman kind of alluded to the, the feeling that, you know, things are kind of back to normal as we start to be allowed to do certain things. And I think everyone is eagerly awaiting for that back to normal, for the end of this pandemic. Uh, But according to models, how do you see the next few months? What do they look like for us? So I think the next few months will be challenging because I don't think we are out in front of B117 and it does have a higher transmission rate like like we saw. And that's driving some of the changes we're seeing now. In the long term, I think uh, with B117, absolutely the vaccines we have are effective. They will work. They will work uh, and allow a lot of reopening if we can all be vaccinated. That may mean one day vaccinating those younger uh, age groups as well as the adults and really trying to to encourage people to to get vaccinated. It's probably will be the cornerstone of our way out of this. But I think before then, unfortunately, we will see a rises in B117 that threaten our healthcare capacity again. It's kind of like, you know, another we had the one pandemic and then we allowed, unfortunately, uh, a second one in a way of this variant to, to establish itself in Canada. And unfortunately, I think we're going to be seeing that in the next few months before we're all vaccinated or everyone who wants a vaccine is vaccinated. Dr. Baseman, I think none of us expected to be here a year later. And I think it's hard psychologically to kind of dig deep when we don't know the goalposts, when we don't know what the end, we, we don't know how to say what, what to tell ourselves. Only a few more months, only a few more weeks. What do you say to people who are just feeling isolated, who feel defeated and who say, I just want to get back to my more normal life? Uh, what do you say to make sure that, you know, we continue to be vigilant? Yeah, that's a very understandable point. It's it's very natural for people to feel this way. 12 months is a long time to have to restrict your activity. So many people's lives have been so affected by this. I think the key message to deliver to the public is that unlike wave one and wave two, where restrictions, or particularly wave one, where the restrictions and lockdowns were a bridge to nowhere, they were just temporizing measures until the time where cases would have risen. This time, these restrictions, these lockdowns, they are a bridge to vaccination. This time, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And we see that based on the experience of other nations. So if people can try to appreciate that point, try to appreciate that we are closer to the end than we've ever been, that we have a way out of this, which is vaccines, then perhaps they can swallow this additional restriction a little bit while longer, hopefully. All right. Carolyn Cullen is an epidemiological modeler at Simon Fraser University. And Dr. Alan Vaisman is an infectious disease physician with the University Health Network in Toronto. Thanks both for taking the time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.